Hey guys, Gonzo here. Um, those of you who've been following my thread on uh, the 944 online forum, you know I've been um, rebuilding this uh, 1983 944 Porsche. Um, it's been an evolutionary process and my whole um, plan is to complete this car entirely with information, parts, and services, um, as well as expertise of fellows like yourself, uh, available exclusively on the internet uh, for a series of articles or a book entitled Cruising the Digital Autobahn. So the step I'm at tonight, and this is the first time I've been doing videos, I've been doing a lot of pictures and, um, and journalizing everything. However, I'm going to do a video tonight. We're going to rebuild a fuel injector uh, from the same car. So before I start, um, I want to show you what I've lined up, what tools I'm going to use, uh, including a custom one. And um, we'll go at it from there, all right? So first and most importantly, um, I have the injector which I removed from the car and you can see it's it's not it, phys it physically is in pretty good shape but it, it is uh, it's a little tarnished and um, the o-rings show a little bit of signs of wear a little bit of drying the uh, plastic uh, washer underneath um, the tip cover or a hat is uh, is dried and cracked um, so we're starting with a certainly a salvageable product but one that uh, needs a little bit of TLC. I purchased um, from Pep Boys a Bosch Warner, a uh, Borg Warner um, rebuild kit. The part number is 274081 and uh, it was four bucks so I bought four of them and invested another sixteen dollars into my bucket this is the kit and the contents. Okay, so it's got the two O-rings, one for the top and one for the bottom at each of the injector port on the fuel rail and in the in the car. It has the spacer, uh, plastic spacing washer or bushing, and it has a, a new hat for the injector tip cover. So I'm going to leave those in the plastic bag for right now. Um, this is going to be a four-stage process we're going to uh, clean the outside, remove all the tarnish and gunk, and then uh, we're going to flush and back flush the, the injector. So the, the tools that I need, and I'm a, I'm a dollar store guy, so I hope this helps for you. Um, every time I can, I buy a bunch of these because you never know when you're gonna use them. Uh, so this is a roasting pan. Um, I also saved the plastic covers, but for this we're only using the metal. I have some carbon choke cleaner, which I'm going to take down the outside and then I'm going to use afterwards to clean the fuel rail. My second step is um, a, just an old junky toothbrush, steel bowl, and some mineral spirits. We're going to loosen up the, the tough varnish on the, uh, on the injector. Um, I have some toothpick, I mean, sorry, Q-tips and some ATF, but that's that's for last. It just happened to be on the bench there. I'm gonna have a small tray for as I take things apart, I can hang on to the parts. Okay, and then um, I have a Dremel, a Roto tool. Uh, yeah, I use the 300s, multi-speed, but whatever. And then I have two brushes. I have a, a flat steel brush, a polishing brush, and I have a also a soft steel um, cup brush for the Dremel to to get in the edges when, once we're done uh, loosening up all the junk. And then um, I have my custom flushing kit. So um, there's three components. There's a uh, the, the actual flushing kit which is made of another dollar store item. It is a, a squeeze bottle. Um, they're available in red, yellow, and <laughs> clear. I like to use clear so I know what's in them. Uh, a piece of 5 16 um, vinyl 
tube. Again, I'm using clear so I can see the transfer of fluid, but if not, um, I've also successfully done this with um, PVC hose, um, which is, uh, this happens to be 1130 seconds inside diameter, but 516s or 1132s are both good. Um, again, the clear is just so that we can see the, the transfer, and I think you'll appreciate that. Uh, I have a, a pulsing um, tool, which I constructed of a 12-volt DC transformer. Um, I happen to work at low voltage, so I have access to them, but you can buy them online um, or at Radio Shack for a couple of bucks. 12-volt DC, uh, 125 or 250. Um, I, I'm sorry, 12 volts DC for 120 volt AC input, and um, this is only an 800 milliamp transformer, but one amp, two amp. Um, I'm pretty sure that the the fuse in the car that's going to handle this is a minimum of eight amps, so there's no problem, um, you know, pumping one amp or, or a little bit less through the injector and it that's certainly sufficient to make it click what I've done now is I've taken a wire pair spliced the black put some um, alligator clips on the end okay we're going to use this to clip onto the injector later splice the black straight through okay and then I cut the red which coming off of the transformer is the is the hot lead so I've spliced the red on the bottom of a button it's a, and you can see that so the, the black goes straight through and the red is is joined by the button so when the transformer is plugged in and I complete the circuit by pressing the button it shoots 12 volts DC to those two alligator clips which is enough to pulse the injector. And then finally, this is my pickle jar, and you can see it's actually a pickle jar. And I've drilled two holes in the top. One is a vent hole, and the other is uh, was drilled using a step bit um, down to I'm going to call it a fat three quarters. It's almost 13 16 If I put it in the hole, you'll see it sits on the 13 16 rim, but I can't I can move it around because the hole is metric. Um, you know, it's not an exact fit. So uh, any uni bit you can get them at Home Depot. And then I just rasped out the edges with a little grinding bit on my drill. So just a regular 18 volt drill, and I created this. Now the injector will sit directly in there and so when we're pulsing it and cleaning it the solvent will go through into the jar so we don't have to worry about mess you notice I don't have to hold it it's pretty stable um, so I can put the clip on and I can pulse the injector and hold the bottle on the other hand okay it also works to back flush so we put the injector the other way connect our 5 16 tube to the top of that and do exactly the same in reverse so we're just going to apply a little bit of pressure by squeezing that bottle so I'll demonstrate that whole process um, when we get to it so let me clean up and and get ready to uh, start this process